This video on alexia without agraphia is intended for anyone learning stroke symptoms for the first time. So it's a very novice approach. My name is Armin, and let's just dive right into it. So you're going to read a long vignette, a couple paragraphs long, but essentially it's going to boil down to something like this. I can't read anymore, but I can see and write. So whether it's someone uh, that's reading, you know, the scrolling text from Fox News at the bottom and they see it but can't read it or they're able to write down something on a piece of paper and then come back to it later and are unable to read what they wrote down themselves. Really fascinating. So before we jump into this, I want to define a couple of things here. The inability to read is alexia and the inability to write is agraphia. And we'll use those terms throughout this. So alexia without agraphia, meaning the inability to read without an inability to write. And this is going to occur with left PCA strokes. And recall PCA stands for posterior cerebral artery. Now, is it any kind of PCA stroke? Well, no, it has to be left side and also has to include this posterior portion of the corpus callosum, this right here, right here. Um, just to give you a couple of landmarks here, here's the cerebellum, and then here's the big belly of the pons, right? And I think splenia means something like bandage in Greek, and then genu, the knee kind of thing. So left PCA stroke involving this plenium can give us alexia without agraphia. So let's diagram this out. We drew our head, we draw the splenium of the corpus callosum, remember that's the left to right connection, and then we separate the hemispheres into left and right. But this is kind of strange. Why is the right on the left portion of your screen? Well, this is just to be consistent with the way an MRI image would appear. So if you look at some MRI images afterwards of this stroke, you're gonna notice some enhancement over here. That's because the stroke involves the corpus callosum as well as the occipital cortex on the left side. Okay, so left PCA infarct affecting visual cortex right here, the occipital lobe, and the splenium of the corpus callosum. This is important because there is a center right here called the reading center in the left angular gyrus. And it's the left side for most people, even if they're left-handed. Now, what's the problem here? Well, the right side is seeing just fine. You do not have the stroke affecting here. I'm just sloppy with my mouse here when I draw. But this is just fine. This can interpret vision just fine, okay? And what should happen is that all of this information should cross over through the corpus callosum, right, the splenium portion here, and then travel to the reading center so you can interpret it. That's one way you can do it. And the other way is the left portion can go over here. Well, you just knocked out the left portion, but you also knocked out the connection to the reading center. Okay, maybe not necessarily the reading center itself, but you can knock out the connection to it so the right information can't travel over to the reading center. And that's kind of the whole summary of this. So bad or no vision here in the left occipital cortex, good vision in the right, but it can't travel to the reading center. So if we draw in our eyeballs here and look at what happens with the right visual field, the right visual field is going to hit the left portion of the right eyeball and the left portion of the left eyeball. Now as you can see here, the left portion of the right eyeball is going to cross over and go down to the occipital cortex over here. The left portion of the left eyeball stays on the left side. So I think that's the best way to think of uh, which way things are going to end up being represented in the cortex. The left portion of each eyeball, so the left retina of each eyeball goes to the left side and the right portion of each eyeball is going to go to the right side. Now, we're getting, we lost this visual field, right, because we lost this cortex, but this visual field is just fine. So if we look at uh, visual fields, right, and I'm sorry, but this is again switching rotations on you, this view right here is as if these were the patient's eyeballs looking forward. So this is what's lost. It's not flipped like this. And we call this right homonymous hemianopsia. Okay. So what do you expect their visual acuity to be overall? Well, they could be close to normal, close to 2020. Their central vision is preserved with that right macula. Some peripheral vision loss in the right visual field, as we showed right here, but they might not even notice because they can have a high acuity because of some preservation of the right side, right? It's a problem of communication in this case. So in summary, it's really what's being seen by the right lobe can't be sent over to the reading center. Okay. The left occipital lobe can't see, so it can't send a message over to the reading center, and that doesn't require crossing over, but it just doesn't work in this case. And the right can see, 
but it has a trouble crossing over. So it's the combination of those two things. So imagine being able to write something down and then not being able to read your own writing. It's really fascinating. So if you stuck it out this far, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.